In this video, we're going to focus on standard reduction potentials. So let's write it for fluorine. So fluorine acquires two electrons and turns into two fluoride ions. And the cell potential for this half reaction is positive 2.87 volts. Now whenever the cell potential is positive, the process is spontaneous in the forward direction. If the cell potential is negative, it's non-spontaneous in the forward direction, but it is spontaneous in the reverse direction. So keep that in mind. So what this tells us is that fluorine, a nonmetal, has a strong desire for electrons. And we know that to be true because fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. And that's why it has such a very high uh, cell potential. Now another one is chlorine. Chlorine also wants to acquire electrons. And so the cell potential for this is 1.36 volts. And for oxygen, oxygen in the presence of acid will acquire electrons and turn into water. And so the cell potential is 1.23 volts. Now, if you notice, whenever you have a half reaction where the electrons are on the left side, it's always a reduction half reaction. And so if you look at the table for the standard reduction potentials for many common half reactions, you'll see that all of them have the electrons on the left side because it's reduction. Now these elements, fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, they're nonmetals. And nonmetals tend to have a strong desire for electrons. So nonmetals tend to be oxidizing agents. They cause other substances to be oxidized. They take away electrons from other things. Now which of these nonmetals is the strongest oxidizing agent? The answer is fluorine because it has the highest cell potential. It has the strongest desire to take away electrons from something. And so that's what an oxidizing agent does. It strips off electrons from other elements and other compounds. And so these nonmetals, they're very strong oxidizing agents. Even the gold plus three ion is a strong oxidizing agent. The cell potential for this half reaction is 1.5. It's stronger than oxygen and chlorine. Another powerful oxidizing agent is hydrogen peroxide. Under acidic conditions, it has a very powerful desire to strip off electrons from something. The cell potential is 1.78. And so hydrogen peroxide, the stuff you may see in your bathroom, has a stronger pull or a stronger desire for electrons than chlorine if it's under acidic conditions. So the pH of the solution is very important if you see hydrogen ions in the half cell reaction. So by adjusting the pH of the solution, you can adjust the cell potential of that reaction. Now for this one, it's not pH dependent. There are no H plus ions. So chlorine is a strong oxidizing agent under acidic or basic solutions. Now comparing fluorine, chlorine, and oxygen, we said that fluorine is the strongest oxidizing agent. So now what if we look at the stuff on the right side? If we compare fluoride and chloride, which one is a better reducing agent? If fluorine is a stronger oxidizing agent, then fluoride is a weaker reducing agent than chloride. Now even though none of these are good reducing agents, if we compare them to each other, chloride is a better reducing agent than fluoride. Because if you reverse the reaction, negative 1.36 is more positive than negative 2.87. So even though both of them are not good reducing agents, chloride is still better than fluoride because this value is more positive than that value. So if you're comparing the ability of an element or an ion to do something, look at which one has a more positive cell potential. And whatever it's trying to do, the one that has the highest positive cell potential can do the job better. So fluorine is a stronger oxidizing agent than chlorine because the cell potential is more positive. 
2.87 is more positive than 1.36. Chloride is a stronger reducing agent than fluoride because negative 1.36 is more positive than negative 2.87. This is higher on the number line. Now remember, oxidizing agents, they like to take away electrons. Reducing agents like to give away electrons. So fluoride cannot be considered an oxidizing agent because it does not want to acquire electrons. Fluorine can be considered an oxidizing agent because it can acquire electrons. Now, you can treat chloride as an, a reducing agent because it can go back this way and give up these two electrons. So anything that likes to acquire electrons can be described as an oxidizing agent, and anything that can give away electrons can be described as a reducing agent. Now let's see if you were paying attention. So let's compare zinc and a zinc 2 plus ion. So which of these two species can behave as an oxidizing agent, and which one can behave as a reducing agent? The zinc 2 plus ion can behave as an oxidizing agent. It doesn't mean it's a good oxidizing agent, but because it has the ability to acquire electrons, it can behave as an oxidizing agent. Zinc does not want to acquire electrons. The zinc 2 minus ion, I never heard of such a thing, so we can't describe it as an oxidizing agent. However, zinc can give away electrons, so it's best described as a reducing agent. So anything that is neutral or that is positively charged can be described as an oxidizing agent. Now something that is neutral or negatively charged typically can be described as a reducing agent because it has the ability to give away electrons and this has the ability to acquire electrons. So for example, zinc can give away two electrons as it turns into the zinc 2 plus ion. So we can treat zinc as a reducing agent. And if we write the reverse reaction, the zinc 2 plus ion can acquire two electrons. So we could treat this as an oxidizing agent because it can take electrons from something else. Now let me write a few reduction reactions and then I'm going to ask you some questions on it. So first we have the silver cation it acquires one electron to turn into Ag, and the cell potential for that is positive 0.8 volts. Next up is the copper 2 plus ion, which is going to acquire two electrons, and the cell potential for this is positive 0.34. Next, let's use zinc. So these are all reduction potential. So all of the electrons are on the left side. This is going to be negative 0.76. And then we're going to use aluminum. And this is negative 1.66. And then let's use sodium. And so that is negative 2.76 volts. So which species is the strongest oxidizing agent? So when dealing with oxidizing agents, you want to focus on the ones that can acquire electrons. So that's everything on the left side. These guys can acquire electrons. Now the strongest oxidizing agent is going to be the one that has the most positive cell potential. And so Ag plus has the most positive cell potential. So therefore, this is going to be the strongest oxidizing agent. It has the strongest desire to acquire an electron. The sodium ion is the weakest oxidizing agent. Now, which one is the strongest reducing agent? What would you say? Now, the reducing agents are on this side. The metals have the ability to give away electrons. So we're dealing with the reverse reaction. Which one is the strongest reducing agent and which one is the weakest? The strongest reducing agent is sodium. I'm going to write SR for strongest reducing agent. And the weakest is AG. Because if we reverse the reaction, 
sodium has the strongest desire to get rid of an electron. The cell potential will change from negative to positive 2.76. So this is going to be the most positive value when given away an electron. If we reverse this reaction, let's see if I can fit it in somewhere. So I'm just going to delete these guys. AG really doesn't have a desire to give away an electron. And so notice that the cell potential is negative, which means it's non-spontaneous. AG is not going to give up that electron unless someone takes it from it. So as we can see, this is a very weak reducing agent because it doesn't want to give up the electron. It has a, a negative cell potential. But sodium really wants to give away the electron. So that's why sodium is a strong reducing agent, but AG is a weak reducing agent. So make sure you understand this. Metals and negatively charged ions tend to be reducing agents. Non-metals and positively charged ions tend to be oxidizing agents. Now you can have a positively charged metal ion that can be an oxidizing agent too, so that's possible. And the more positive the cell potential, the more spontaneous the reaction is, the greater the driving force for that process to occur. So that's it for this video. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.